Um, Delta Kana says, thank you for a $5 super chat. I sent you an email about a long range build. I'm working on, could you go through it briefly? It's nothing crazy. All righty. Uh, let's see, where is that? It's always tricky. Oh, here we go. James Gellermino. Um, let's take a look. James asks, can we zoom in on this? We can make it zoom in. Oh, that's a little easier to read. I am wanting to build a long range quad to go at least 24 kilometers. I'm not sure what I should use to build it regarding the VTX receiver and radio. For the VTX, I want to use the DJI Air unit with the Avatar camera. Is there a 10 upgrades I should use on the Air unit? For the goggles, I have DJI V2. I want to use XAir patch antennas. Receiver-wise, I'm thinking about using Crossfire. Uh, Radio-wise, I have DJI. I was thinking about modifying it to fit the TBS module. Is that possible? Okay. Um, so, James, first of all, I want to uh, give. I, I want to give you the same warning that I give to everybody who reaches out to me asking about a long-range build. And I want to say that if you are not already a moderately experienced RC pilot, I don't recommend that you build a long-range build. Um, and the questions that you're asking make me think that you're not, that, that this is like your first RC plane, okay, or RC quad. Um, I, if I'm wrong about that, that's cool. Well, I'm still going to answer your questions, but I want to say uh, there are so many things that can go wrong with long range. And when they go wrong, you lose your quad, you lose your aircraft. It just crashes in the mountains and you never see it again. And yes, there are things you can do to work around that, like having returned to home and so on. But it's just the chances of you just completely losing your aircraft and all the work and money you put into it is gone. They're, they're high. They're at least medium. And so uh, I don't recommend anybody start with long range, right? Now, I, I do like the fact that you're talking about flying in the mountains because then if you decide to ignore my advice and go fly your plane in the mountains, and you fail safe and you crash it, at least you just lose it in the mountains and you don't crash it on somebody's car or somebody's house or et cetera, right? But it'd be better if you just didn't lose your quad entirely. So I would say that before anybody tackles long range, they should be a, a, me, a moderately experienced pilot just at normal FPV flying in the say sub one kilometer, maybe sub two kilometers within line of sight line of sight because obviously you have goggles on within the line of sight of your spotter who is totally there okay because when you when you fail safe or when you lose video and you're flying within the you know one to two kilometers range then you just walk out and you get it you pick it up you come back you're like oh shit i screwed up what did i do wrong you learn from your mistakes and you figure out the things that Oh, I didn't put my props on. I didn't tighten my props nuts. One of them came loose while I was flying. My quad fell out of the air. Okay, don't do that again. Oh, I see. When I fly behind a building or a hill, I lose video and the quad crashes. Okay, don't do that again. And then eventually you learn all these things and then you're ready. You go, oh, I see. When I fly my battery down to this voltage, then suddenly the battery takes out and it seemed like I could keep flying, but it turns out that I couldn't and I lost my quad. Oh, but you didn't because you weren't flying long range. You learn all these things and then you go fly long range and there's still a lot of things about long range that will screw you up that you'll have to learn and you may still lose a quad, but at least you'll have learned the basics. So, so get into your questions. Um, you can't use the DJI air unit with a non DJI camera. So if you're using the DJI V2 goggles, you will be using a DJI air unit with a DJI camera. Uh, for the air unit, if you're trying to fly long range, I would get a high quality antenna. The stock antennas aren't bad, but it, like something like a, um, I mean, this is just one example. They make these quote unquote long range antennas and basically all they are is an extra long stalk so the antenna sticks up higher. Oops, that was too far. Um, so these are good for a long range build. 
Okay, for DJI, you would want a left-hand polarized one. Pretty sure. I mean, so if you wanted to upgrade the antennas, you could do something like that. Uh, going back to your question, Xair patch antennas are fine. They're not the highest gain, but they're, they're, with a with a you'll be able to get pretty good range out of them. Certainly, uh, Crossfire is a great choice for a long range link. The 900 megahertz frequency is going to be just a little bit better than uh, 2.4 gigahertz at bending around the mountains. Just a little bit better. I don't know anybody who has modified the DJI radio to fit the TBS Crossfire module. I think it's probably possible, but I don't think it's a good idea. I think you should just buy a radio that's designed for use with Crossfire. Um, or here's the other thing that, that we haven't mentioned. I, I bet the chat is saying this and I haven't seen it. Uh, the DJI V2 system maxes out at 13 kilometers. It simply cannot go past 13 kilometers. It will simply lose video right at 13 kilometers. It doesn't matter what antennas you use, yada, yada, yada. There is a technical limitation. So if you definitely need to go 24 kilometers, you're going to need the O3 air unit. Let's see. 13 kilometer hard limit. So you can, with the O3 system, you can go further. So you may want to choose the O3. And uh, if you go with the O3, you probably can just go with a DJI controller and skip Crossfire. But if you choose to go, Crossfire would be a better choice. And if you choose to use Crossfire, then uh, you should just get it. Don't get the DJI radio. Get, just get a radio made for use with Crossfire. All right, James, thank you for the super chat. 